Motorcycles are great. Parachuting is great. Various things are great. It depends upon what a person wants to be entertained by at that moment. My name is Jim Oranger, and I was born in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Went into the military, was a member of the 82nd Airborne Division for two and a half years, and became more and more interested in the style maneuvers of parachuting, which uh, is the performance of a number of maneuvers in the air prior to the opening of the parachute. Worked on it enough after some harassment by the military to the point where I won the national style championships, later the world championships in Sofia, Bulgaria, and then again in France, and the overall world championships in 1962. I learned a lot of things about strength, about having certain forms of power. It was a good experience because I learned what heroes are, what it takes to be a hero that confidence, that knowing, that understanding. A parachute jump allows you as much freedom as you can possibly have. Whether or not you survive is dependent upon you. It's not dependent on your friend or your mother. You alone make the decision whether you will live or die. I think that living fully is intensified by experiencing the various parallels of nearly dying. I'm in Hollywood to be an actor. It's a challenge. And as long as it is entertaining, it's a good way to make a living. is the heightened use of senses, the color, audition, kinesthesis, and so on. It's a very sensual and sensuous experience, both. Now, this is an experience of oneness in which the uh, ability to even differentiate that I am separate from you has broken down. You would look down and you would see your body disappear. It's a pretty anxiety-provoking experience. Then one gets the point, well, what's left? LSD like hypnosis, or like parachuting, is a subject that is not known or understood by the people. Resultantly, a fear exists. That fear causes legislation to prevent the usage of something that is not understood. It will change. People will be allowed to explore their own minds, eventually, to explore their minds not necessarily through drugs, but perhaps through meditation, through diet, through exercise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. New forms, new visual sensations, new feelings, transcendental experiences. There are a lot of ways of expanding one's consciousness. It's your baby, you do it. On the average uh, parachute jump, a parachutist departs an aircraft at about 7,000 feet and he falls down to 2,000 feet, which means he falls uh, for approximately 30 seconds at speeds of anywhere from 125 miles an hour up to about 220. But by changing the body position, one can increase or decrease his speed as well as fly in various directions.
was he was he transformed himself later. But uh, I I went and watched uh, I went to a, attended a lecture of his and uh, asked him, would you like to be in this movie? And and uh, <coughs> he said fine. And so you see him in the film lecturing to people in Topanga Canyon to a large group of people. Very clean cut college kids. Well, uh, in that crowd, it's difficult to pick them out. You have uh, Steve McQueen, uh, uh, Corinne Calve, uh, uh, various other people uh, who are not in makeup with lights on them and all that. They're just people in the crowd. At any rate, I, I, I then had Albert speaking about lysergic acid uh, diethylamide and also uh, uh, Jim Arinder, who is the world champion skydiver, who is another character in the film. Not a character, he's one of the people who we depict. Uh, and I'll get, that's a typical case. Uh, I met um, Arinder, and actually he was traveling around the country working with uh, Alfred. And uh, he said, uh, can I be in your movie? And I said, well, do you meet the three criteria? <laughs> uh, and, he, and he said, well, I'm, a, uh, I'm the world champion skydiver. And he had won the championship twice, I believe in France, uh, once. And uh, he was also the camel ad on, in Times Square blowing smoke rings out of his mouth. The back page, the back cover of Look magazine. He was quite well known, so I said, "Well, you're you're a well known skydiver. You're the world champion, and you're part of the Camel cigarette commercials and all that. But what have you got to do with Hollywood?" And he said, "Oh, I'm here to be an actor. I'm here to succeed in movies." So I said, "Okay, what would you like me to film you doing?" That was the same thing I post everybody. I was going to ask about the skydiving sequence. How did you shoot that? Well, he said, well, uh, one day he called me and said, I'm going to skydive. Would you like to film me skydiving? And I said, I'd like, you know, I'd like to include the sequence, but I have absolutely no interest in jumping out of an airplane by myself. I'm a very conservative person. When I see a mountain, if I feel like getting to the top, I do it one step after the other, very slowly and carefully. I don't even roller skate. I don't even bicycle. Okay, I, I ski, but I only do uh, Nordic skiing, not Alpine skiing. I ski on the flat as much as possible, or I snowshoe. So I'm not one for taking physical chances. Okay? So I said, okay, how do we get you in the air? And he said, well, I have a friend named Doyle Fields, who's uh, working as a, as a hairdresser now, but he's an accomplished skydiver. And I said, okay, I spoke to Doyle, and we, uh, I rented the camera that was used for the movie Grand Prix, the racing car movie, or Grand Prix, as they say in the United States. <laughs> and, and it was a magnesium alloy 35 millimeter camera built into a helmet, weighed seven pounds, which meant that when Doyle pulled his release on his parachute, he had to reach up with one hand and hold his head to keep the camera from breaking his neck because when you're falling at 125 miles an hour and you suddenly pull the chute and you've got a seven pound weight on one side of your head, you're taking a very big chance. I waited on the ground right at the X target. Arinder jumped from 7,000 feet and landed within six feet of me, which, which is what you see in the film. Uh, that's how it was done. Uh, Doyle shot him in the air. I waited on the ground and got him when he landed. One take. For just a second, right. skydiver for just a second. Right. At one point, he puts on a corset and does a little dance. What's with the corset? Uh, he had injured his back mm. diving, um, and the corset was not, it was to hold him together while he's skydiving. It, it was a therapeutic device. It wasn't uh, some kind of costume affectation. Okay. <laughs> and 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 the little dance he was doing was he was enthusiastically getting ready to go up in the. Uh, when you did.